Listen, man, I think working with WebSockets in TRPC the way it's meant to be used according to their documentation is kinda ass. And the reason I say that is because the way it's meant to be in their documentation, you neither get the benefit of working directly with the server, nor do you really get the benefit of type safety, and I'm gonna get into the details in this video, but it just doesn't really make sense to me. Man, I'll be the first one to say that I've got massive respect for everybody working on TRPC, because I think they've done a great job regarding the query and the mutation and the type safety they've implemented in that regard. Just the subscription I think needs some work, at least the way it's meant to be used in their documentation. Now, let's get into the details of why working with TRPC and WebSockets inside of Next.js just doesn't go well together. Okay, so here we are in Next.js and TRPC with a WebSockets connection already set up. And the reason we are in a project that already has the WebSockets set up is because I don't think it makes too much sense going through the whole setup process because it's a pain, honestly, it's not cool. You get a bunch of errors and you always have to figure out why you get this error, like why is this not defined, why is that not defined? because in the uh, documentation, it's not clear at all. So I can show you the uh, documentation, TRPC v10. And we, when you go down to right here, subscription WebSockets, there is um, like an instruction on how to set up uh, the WebSockets, but it's kind of incomplete. So, you know, this is not the best approach. For example, this one right here, this doesn't really make sense. You'll get an error that says like WebSockets is not defined because this will be run on the server and the server doesn't know uh, WebSockets. So you get a bunch of errors and the setup process inside of TRPC and Next.js is just not worth it. So that's why we are in a project that already has WebSockets set up. I went through the entire process. So let me show you how the data flow works and then why this is not the ideal setup that you would probably want to use in a production app. So this uh, integration consists of a bunch of files, but um, most importantly, two parts. We have the front end and then the back end. So this is our WebSockets server. That means we are hosting it on port 3001. We need to set up a bunch of boilerplate that's not really important. Uh, we just need that for the uh, signal termination. Um, essentially, we have a WebSockets connection. Once the connection is established from the client side, we get a plus plus connection. And once the connection is closed, we get a minus minus connection. Uh, so let me show you that when we go to, we can close the previous instance. When we go to localhost um, 3000, we can look into the, let me close the second tab actually. We can go into right here and we see uh, the connection was established. So we have connection one and two, uh, which is both this client by the way. And if I close this connection right here, you can see the server logs out that the connection has been closed. Okay, so where's the problem in establishing um, the server right here and then having, you know, a router to actually interact with the WebSockets? Well, the problem is that you can't really get data from the server as if you were having like an express and socket.io uh, integration, which I much prefer over this approach, but then you don't get the type safety. Type safety is important, but I think this approach is just not the way to go. So in order to subscribe to the WebSockets, like to make the connection, we have to call a function from the front end, which is essentially just a trpc dot and then the router, so the WS router and WS subscription that you can see right here, and then use subscription because this is a subscription. Um, we always have to use a subscription when we're working with uh, WebSockets. Now from trpc, this is required to return an observable and then uh, listen to whatever is emitted from the mutations. Uh, so from the client, when pressing a button, we trigger a mutation. The mutation um, triggers this right here. So whenever we click the button on the front end, that is um, this button right here, mutate, then this function will be run on the back end. So we are in the server side here. And we are essentially just emitting something that is called test. Now we can define this by ourselves, whatever we want to emit. Uh, important is that the um, server is listening. So whenever test is emitted from right here, the test function will be run. So that's that would be this function right here. And the emit.next just means we are uh, propagating whatever data is back here to the client. And that must be of this type, 
So if I change the type, then we will get an error right here. Um, so in this case, we can only send strings back to the uh, client. Now, if I were to save that though, we get, uh, you know, a, a bunch of errors. Um, errors is pretty much all you get. When trying this, uh, options is undefined uh, and whatever. I think that is because uh, we actually need to have an on data here. That really doesn't need to do anything. Um, but I think that is, yeah, that, that is the reason for the error. It's very intransparent. And sometimes if you Google, you won't find much uh, documentation, sadly. Um, so whenever we click this button right now, let me uh, open the console. And now when we click mutate, it says mutated successfully. So what happened is we invoke the mutation. It's the test mutation dot use mutation. So this function right here, it emitted the test. The test event is listened to on the WS server, which is this one. Then the test function is run. So this function is run and that says emit dot next. So send back to the client this message and this message mutated successfully is then received by the on data as the data property. You can see it's the string. So it's whatever type we declared right here is being returned. And then we're logging that um, data out, which is the string of mutated successfully. Now this approach has limitations though. So let's say we want to create a game and this is exactly the use case I wanted to try out with this approach and it didn't work. Um, let's, let's create a game and whenever a user connects, the user also needs to know what other clients are connected to the game, obviously. Um, now with this approach, you can't really do that because how do you keep track of who is connected and who is not? Well, you do that on the server, on the WSS server. So the uh, connection is established and then uh, WebSockets know, okay, we have this user. So if you take a look uh, right now, there is uh, like one open connection, which is this window right here. If I were to connect with another one, it keeps track on the uh, server. So we have four connections. And because each client right here is establishing two connections, um, that just means uh, we have two clients connected pretty much. Um, now, every client is saved on the server. And when we disconnect, that is removed from the server. We've already taken a look at that. Now let's say on the front end, we need to know which clients are connected though. So, so far in a game, that would mean um, how many actual players should be shown on the screen or how many, um, if you wanna um, have a shared mouse window, like where each mouse of every connected client is visible, then you need to know which clients are connected and where are their mouse cursors. With this approach, you can't really do it though, because where would you keep track of the clients, right? You don't have access to the actual server uh, back here. So you can't know which connections are established. And one approach would be to keep track of like the clients right here as a, like a map, for example. And then whenever a connection is established, uh, then you could add the clients. So clients dot, uh, it would be, uh, sets and we're gonna set for example like yeah that's the question what would we set in this instance we would have the actual socket connection but in this one we would have to create a random id and then we could save like you know what would we really save as a client i don't i don't really know it's not very intuitive and keeping track of clients this way is not really good nonetheless because in other integrations like uh, socket.io, for example, that would be completely redundant. And also I've literally tried this approach and it works very unreliably. So this wouldn't really be the way to go. And uh, that is pretty much crucial information you need from the server that you don't get when you're uh, using this approach. And um, as far as I know, there is no real way to do this. Um, and even if you search for like documentation online, there is no knowledge that you can, you know, get back to. The only thing is uh, pretty much what is explained on this website right here. And then there are two projects that you can have a look at. This one is like a very bare bones. So there's not a lot of knowledge to be taken from that. Uh, and then there is a, you know, full stack example that, uh, you know, it is good, but it doesn't really show like what we need to do, like interacting with the server. So while you do get type safety in this approach, I don't think it's very viable. Now you might say, 
okay, if you need to interact with a server and get the connected clients, why don't you integrate socket.io, which uh, does all of that for you. It's basically a WebSockets uh, kind of abstraction that is, you know, more graceful in handling reconnects, for example. Why don't you do that on the server and then connect uh, the server on the front end, uh, for example, with cons socket is equal to either new web socket. You could do that and then have like a domain right here. That is actually one method you could connect to the server, but it still wouldn't really be the best approach in my opinion. Um, and we can take a look at what happens when we integrate WebSocket.io uh, so and this backend right here. Because technically that should solve all our problems, right? We get the type safety from the mutations and TRPC. And then we can also interact with the server directly on the front end and get how many clients are connected and how many clients, uh, you know, disconnect and connect and just basically keep an uh, accurate state of who's connected and who's not. But let me paste in some socket.io code right here. Um, I've already installed the dependencies, so that's why we are not getting an error. And in socket.io, we can, for example, delete all of this. And whenever a client connects, then we're just gonna emit a message to every connected client of type uh, connection. No, actually, let's, let's just uh, call it user connect. And then as an argument, we're gonna pass, we don't need an argument anyways. Uh, so whenever a user connects, that uh, is gonna get sent to all instances. And now in the uh, front end, we can say const socket is equal to IO. And IO is gonna come from the socket.io client side. And that is gonna be localhost uh, 3001, because that's what we said right here. And now that technically should solve all our problems, right? So we can have a use effect right here. We don't need most of the stuff, um, but let's just say whenever um, this event is triggered, so user connected, this needs to match what is emitted right here, user connected. Then we're gonna log something out to the console, which is gonna be uh, user connected. And with this approach, we would actually uh, be able to see how many clients and who is connected to this current uh, WS server um, and send that back to the front end. So let's take a look at what happens and you'll see uh, we can go back in here and we don't get any error. Um, but as you can see in here, Firefox can't establish a connection to the server at WS localhost 3001. Now, why is that issue happening? When we go into the uh, utils TRPC, we can see whenever we are on the server, then the TRPC will initialize the links as the HTTP batch link because the server doesn't know what WebSockets are. And whenever we're on the client, uh, we are initializing the uh, WebSocket client because now we can actually work with the uh, WebSockets API. And I think um, the error message here is a bit misleading. So whenever we, um, open that in Chrome, you can see the actual source of the error. So here it just says um, underscore app.js. But to make it clear to you, I want to show you where the error happens. So right here it says wslink.mjs, uh, which is right here. So we can't establish a WebSockets connection uh, in doing this. And you know, one approach might be to have the WS link right here. And then well, we can just we can just copy this down here instead of this. So we have the link uh, links as an array that contains the WS link. Save that, and we can reload the page. And you see, WebSocket is not defined because now we are trying to initialize the WebSocket on the server, which doesn't make sense. But if we try to, for example, return the batch link instead um, of the WS link, we can do that and that wouldn't throw an error. But now the issue we have that our web sockets are not really connected. You see here user connected, so that works. Um, but that is just because um, socket.io in the back end and the front end are communicating directly. But if we want to use the mutation from earlier, you remember it should log out mutating successfully. So um, that's what should happen uh, whenever we click the button because that's what happened earlier. But if we click mutate and I'm clicking right now, nothing happens because we are not connected 
to the WebSocket server, that is this one right here. So every emit that we do, um, we can log this out. This event is being emitted. So emitted test, the mutation is working. And if we go back to the server, then you can see um, it emitted test. So if I click this a bunch of times, you can see um, the, the mutation is working. So the emit is actually being emitted, but because we are not connected to the WebSocket server in TRPC, nobody is there to listen to the uh, emit happening and therefore um, no data is being sent back to the client and this on data is never running. So that means I don't think there is a good approach in working with TRPC and getting the type safety and also using your actual WebSocket server. Now I might be wrong and I hope I am because you know there is no real good documentation available online. But as of now, I think that is one big issue that TRPC uh, has in Next.js. And the only approach that I prefer is actually not having type safety and just working with socket.io and the WS server directly without any middleman like TRPC with mutations and subscriptions because they just make things more unintuitive and don't work. And that was pretty much all I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.